ya están peinados, you have your, your, your quinceañera dress ready to roll. <laughs> Three flowers. Oh, bro. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right. Come on. You so, know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a secret stuff, man. There you go. Baby. Don't let the hey stop recording, bro. Don't let them have the secrets. <laughs> that's all. Come on, man. Because that you know, well, at, at that, the that's, end, that that shouldn't be broadcasted. That's something <laughs> got to be handed from Jedi to Pad One. You know, it's got to be a workshop. <laughs> Diego Francisco Arancibia. Hey, my name is Dr. Edward Gonzalez, and I'm an educator in the Bakersfield City School District. I also teach part time in the master's program in educational technology at Cal State Fullerton. And I also teach um, part time in the master's program in curriculum and instruction at CSU Bakersfield. Resistance has too often become a reactionary rebranding of the events we have always done to defend and grow our people. I encourage you all not to be passive members in the story of family or the narratives of society. Listen, author, amplify. A people who are continually placed on the defensive will be forced to reallocate time best spent imagining into responding. Change the story, change the game, prioritize dreaming. Mark Gonzalez, in times of terror, wage beauty. It was 2016, December of 2016. Uh, my dear brother, Mark Gonzalez, wrote this book actually in 2015, uh, gave, it, gave it to me and, you know, it was, it, was, it was a gift. So, you know, it was a beautiful book. But after the election of 2016, I saw this book at my parents' house and just the title drew me in in times of terror, wage beauty. And, you know, I told myself, this book would just speak into me and it's gonna become our, my textbook for this next five years or so. And I think in education, what I've done since that time really has used this book to do those three things, listen, author, and amplify. Listening to not just young people, not just uh, the community, but just listening to my own heart. Because at the, at the crux of it for me, this has always, always been a spirit, spiritual endeavor. Like really education has to have this deep, deep sense of compassion, a deep sense of love, where love is not something I do because you're going to love me back, but love is something I do because it's love, right? So listening to myself and listening to my heart, author, being the author of my own creative content, right? Now is not the time to be weak. Now is the time, not the time to be timid. And that was five years ago, and now it's under COVID. So I realized that amplification is, 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 is so important, and you have to be good with it, or else it just sounds like a beating drum with no music to it. But I think that's where it goes again. Listen, author, and amplify. So now I go into these meetings, right, where now they're like these little micro keynotes. I, gotta, I have to be really intentional with the space. Living in the shadow. Can you imagine what kind of life it is to live? In the shadows, people see you as happy and free because that's what you want them to see. Living two lives, happy, but not free. You live in the shadows for fear of someone hurting you, your family, or the person you love. The world is changing and they say it's time to be free. But you live in the fear just of being me. Living in the shadow feels like a safe place to be. No harm for them, no harm for me. But life is short. It is time to be free. Love who you love because life isn't guaranteed. Smile. Gloria Carter. 
when I think about this component about living in the shadow, I think about for those of us who are people of color and in the shadow is what, is what I think about, whether it's something as simple as people pronouncing your name correctly, right? Um, I always share the story was when I was a kid, you know, I had to learn all of my teacher's names, right? Miss Hickabotham. That was so difficult for me to say, Miss Hick, but I practice it, right? Miss Hickabotham, on the very first day we met, she asked me, <clears throat> What's your name? And I say, My name is Martin Ricardo Cisneros. She goes, Okay, Marty Cisneros. I want you to think about that because we have kids, right? who have to put their name when they go to Zoom now during COVID time, right? Who are now seeing everybody's name spelled the way they came into this. Yet a lot of us don't take that time, right? I've been at this game since 1993. And people say, Martin, you've been doing this for such a long time. What, what is the best gadget? What is the best app? What do you recommend? And I always tell folks the best gadget, the, the ultimate app is a well-trained educator. That's the ultimate app. It's you. You are the ultimate app. But see, what you have to realize is that your students is, is, is a culture, right? Your class is a culture. You have different cultures coming into your classroom every single year. And this year is your first year in teaching. It's COVID, right? You started off with the class that you didn't know. So how are you building that culture? How are you, they, how are you making them involved in the curriculum? My takeaway when I think about Gloria Carter and think about living in the shadow is, there are certain people who ask, Martin, why are you always talking about racism? Why is it always such a huge deal? And it's easy for certain folks who can turn that off. I can't. My kids can't. If I walk to a certain store without a collared shirt, I get followed. If I drive my car in certain places, I get followed. I get pulled over. Before even people meet me, they start speaking to me in Spanish as if I don't know any other language. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have one solution, but what I do have is a recommendation. Be a student of your students. When you are a student of your students, you have a different mindset of how you move forward. And it's not all just about the technology, it's about the opportunities you provide and the access to information that you provide. Love who you love because life isn't guaranteed. Love your students, smile. You didn't see me on television. You didn't see news stories about me. The kind of role that I tried to play was to pick up pieces or put together pieces out of which I hoped organization might come. My theory is strong people don't need strong leaders. Ella Baker. So Ella Baker was very much a, an unsung hero of the, the civil rights movement, and I highly recommend that everybody go and, and read up on, on Ella Baker. But I think that uh, as, we, as we come through the, the issues that are happening in education and society, we really need to be careful about how we approach these issues in our mentality when we approach it. And what I mean by that is, especially as educators, that we step away from having that savior mentality, where it's us that are coming in to save certain people or to save our classrooms or to save our students, when the reality is, is that we are teachers, we are members of a community. That in and of itself doesn't make us a, a, a hero 
our role, our job is to help facilitate um, and create uh, learning spaces where kids can come in and grow. When we look at our job from the perspective of us being a hero, as us being the saviors of the students, we're elevating ourselves in a way that they might not do not only the, the students, but our community uh, justice. So about seven or eight years ago, I, I met a, a gentleman, Dr. Joe Dixon, and he made me do everything with, uh, with student leadership, peer teaching. And it was funny because he told me, no, 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 you're not gonna lecture. You're not gonna lecture in these classes. And at that point I was, I was a good lecturer. I was an entertainer. Like kids came into my class and they were laughing. They were, you know, we had chants, we had everything going. And, and Dr. Dixon said, that's not happening here. The first time that, uh, that we run a student led professional development, I was, I, I, I didn't buy into it at that moment. And uh, I, I remember, I can tell you when I did buy into it. When I finally bought into it was in the, about 10, 15 minutes into the session, I had a student who was, uh, he was teaching our assistant principal who was known for being a firm disciplinarian who could stare at a kid from about 50 yards away and make all the kids swallow their gum without her saying a word. And he's working with her and he's working with another teacher. Neither of them were taking the student very serious. They were both kind of uh, off task. They were playing, they, were, uh, they, they just weren't doing any of the work. And then I, I look over and I see the student getting really frustrated. And then um, he finally kind of boils over and he says in, a, in his own loud teacher voice as an eighth grader, he says, did you come to learn or did you come to play? And the entire class erupts with laughter. The, uh, the assistant principal and the teacher turn bright red and they kind of like, you know, perk up and they both get down busy to work. The boy, he got flush red with embarrassment. But I realized something there. I realized that educators our accountability doesn't come from, uh, from administrators above us. It doesn't come from the state. It doesn't come from parents. Our accountability comes from the students that we serve. And the students that we serve are the perfect, um, the perfect balance to the roles that we have in the class. So like I said before, I can get kids engaged. I can get the learning buzzing. But to have them teach others, to have them teach adults, that was empowerment. And that was something different that I hadn't experienced before. So now it's eight years later, and um, I've taken kids to, to teach at conferences. I've taken kids to teach in professional development. I've taken kids um, to, to teach at my classes at, at CSU Bakersfield. And whenever I take them, the room's always buzzing at a different level. It's way different than anything that takes place in a regular classroom. There's always something special in the air. And it, it, to me, um, it's, it's almost like a, like a championship game, like a, a certain, that, that type of feeling in the air. And uh, the, the answer that I'll tell you here for, for you is you have to, you, well, first of all, yes, you do have to step back. You are not gonna be the leader in that space. The leader is going to be the students who are going to be running these experiences. And if you're wondering, what does that look like? How can I actually implement that? The key is what can your students teach adults that adults don't already know? We're lucky that we're here and it's a technology conference and guess who happens to be a digital native when there are still many who are in our teaching ranks who are not digital natives. So if you want, for example, your third graders to teach an adult something that most adults don't know, you could have them teach, you could teach the adults how to code robots. You could teach the adults how to do basic block programming. If you want middle schoolers or high schoolers to teach adults something that they likely don't know, you can have them teach adults how to make 3D models and incorporate them into math lessons. You could have them learn how to create their own sites. Again, put the learning in the hands of the students and then rather than have the learning trickle down to the kids, have the learning rush up in a wave. Let, let the kids literally own where the content is coming from and how it's being delivered. It's powerful and when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a very different buzz and it's, um, it's addicting. You're gonna love it. My name is Maria martinez Pullin, and you can reach me at Superintendent S-U-P-T-M-M Pullin. My name is Veronica Godinez. I'm principal at Pomona Unified School District and also serve as one of your Q, your Q board members. Hello, everyone. I'm Xander Galvan, uh, 
And you can reach me on Twitter at ZJ Galvan. You can reach me on Facebook at Xander Joe Galvan. And you can reach me on Instagram as Zan Galvan. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Rose Isaiah. You can find me on Twitter. It's the best place to find me at R-O-S-A-I. S-I-A-H. Hey everyone, my name is Lynn Mara Colon, and you can find me on Twitter at The Colognes. Hello, I'm Jessica Gomez. I'm Principal and Colton Joint Unified in Southern California, and you can reach me on Instagram and Twitter at Mrs. Jess Gomez. Hi, I'm Pam Gildersleeve Hernandez. I'm the Executive Director at Q. That's awesome. So mm-hmm. where did the name Sister Circle came from? Or was there, a, was it a Genesis also? Was, this, was there other names prior? Was it the Super Friends? Was it, you know, the real Marvel mm-hmm. League? The, you know, the real <laughs> Avengers? What, 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 what were you, what? The Sheroes. The Sheroes. <laughs> there you go. Well, we well, have, we have another name also. <laughs> that we may or may not share with you. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. It may may not be appropriate. (laughs) Of course, it's always appropriate. I mean, the more I know of you, the the, the better questions I can ask. Chingona, badass. (laughs) All one word? Is that your password? Is that? (laughs) (laughs) Anybody want to I'm trying to find a picture of the (laughs) t-shirt. I know, but I can't find it all of a sudden. Well, I don't have the definition, but it's definitely someone who, who gets work done, Mm -hmm. someone who is bold and someone who is doing Mm -hmm. this work and fearless. And um, as it relates to kids and, and education is we're not going to back down. We're going to do what's right for kids every time. That is awesome. So I just want to say that I think we all went to the same university. Let me just. Loyola Marymount. <laughs> Welcome to UCLA because I never knew any of you. <laughs> King City High School was that the place? Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, we all went to CSU oh, Chingon State University. So, <laughs> what would you say to yourself if I gave you a time machine and I can roll you back to February of this year? What would you tell yourself? I would tell myself, make sure that you are surrounded by um, like-minded people, but more importantly, surrounded by a group of people that are going to support you, that are is a safe space, um, a group of people that are going to believe you and uplift you in the good and the bad times, um, a group of people that are going to help um, elevate you. It's going to help, you know, maybe even ch- you know challenge your thinking, and also a group of people that. Um, it is really going to embrace who you are as a person. To add to that and to say, Jessica, you're, you're absolutely correct. I would, I would like to say to myself, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna find people who will support you. You're gonna find people who will um, add to your thinking, who will, um, who will give you that, um, that and, who will um, add to what you're, um, proposing. And I think that's what this group does, because there are times when we come up with a challenge, hey, we're going to interview a teacher. What are some new questions we can ask in this new environment? And one person will drop in a question, somebody else drops in another question. So we really support each other with that word and. Another important point here, if I may add, is the social emotional support that we have as sisters. Not only do we support ourselves as in a professional way, but we come together in a most intimate way where I know in this circle, in this chat group that we created, I can trust and I can be me 110% genuinely and authentic. No one's going to laugh at me. Every morning, there is a morning message that comes up to encourage me, to empower me, to say, hey, Veronica, remember you're a chingona. We got to keep going. We're doing great. And don't worry, everything is going to be okay. Martin, may I add to that too? Yes. Definitely. May I add to that too, Martin, a little bit? Mm-hmm. And so um, the crazy thing about this too that um, people need to know is like the majority of us haven't even met each other in person. We communicate mostly over text, but we are so connected to each other. And so um, just echoing what others had said, we hit hot, like super serious topics like racism. I mean, and we're talking about how do we navigate those through our districts? We talk about reopening our schools and the parents that want them in and the parents that don't want them in. And we talk about equity and what we have to do to make sure that students have everything that they deserve to have um, an equitable education, that they can thrive. 
And so each one of us have our board meetings. We deal with crazy things. Lynn on the East Coast getting out of board meetings at midnight and we're over here at nine o'clock saying, you got this girl, you're, you're gonna be fine when there's crazy all around us, right? And then the other thing that we do is um, everything the girl said with like the social emotional, we lift each other up, we drop a problem in our text group and we say, oh my God, I'm dealing with this. How do I solve this? And quickly, like within minutes, a sister jumps in and says, here are your questions for that interview to get the best teachers. Here is what you can do with those parents that are gonna be coming at you because they don't want their kids back in school. Um, all those kinds of things, like in real time, mm -hmm. it's exactly what um, Hermana Maria just said is like, if, if they would have told us, it's okay, you're gonna be fine. You can open up a school district. You can do these kinds of things. As long as you have these fierce women at your side, holding your hand, like there's nothing you can't accomplish. I was gonna say the, the grace also, because you have to be vulnerable before you step out there. And our roles require so much strength and we're supporting other people. So for me, uh, what our communication does is I can be vulnerable. I get grace from the group and then I can go out there and be strong. Absolutely. I, I think I told the group, this is a group I didn't realize I needed. Mm. Um, I, I don't know how I would have gone gotten through those first few months without this connection here. And when Pam texted me, I, I was like, huh, what? <laughs> um, because I'm not really part of anything like this with just uh, females, with just um, women who are so passionate about working with kids, um, Latinos. Um, so it, it, it is like a comfort. Mm -hmm. That's my backup. So I know I can always rely and go back to my backup. And as Lynn said, no judgment. You're free to express and um, to be vulnerable, to be yourself. It's not about credit in this group. We have a folder of resources where we drop in, like here's all kinds of different plans and policies and things that we're developing. And we look at it from our very different perspectives. I, I think for me, it is really about equity and access. And um, we saw the biggest disparity with the pandemic um, that so many of our families and students um, did not have access to resources. And in order to make education a reality and a world-class education a reality for them, we really needed to, um, to step outside of what we were doing before and to reimagine how we were providing um, our resources and how we were teaching and reaching out. And so working with this group has allowed for that and has allowed for us to reach out in ways that will inspire and motivate our staff. So my next question for you all is how are you building community? The social emotional learning, the transformative um, cell piece has been uh, something we've really focused on and not only for students, but for adults. And that ability to uh, mirror check and understand where you are with your self-awareness um, in order to better connect with kids so um, everything that Rosa said is, is exactly, is, I think we could, I think she speaks for all of us, right? And, um, you know, some of, some of, some of the, the ways that we do that, right? Whether for me, like Rosa said, it's the, it's the adults, right? So I need to make sure that I take care of the adults um, first because the adult, well, I don't know about first, but it's, it's a critical piece, right? Of taking care of supporting your adults that um, you're leading. And so, uh, you know, some of the things that I did the first few weeks of school was like, I had office hours every day, like whoever shows up, shows up. And at the beginning, like the first four or five weeks, like I had a lot of teachers showing up because there's all these questions, engagement records, attendance, what do you mean? I marked them president. They're not on my mark. Like all of these things were so new. And they like, like, like we're not, the same, we're not getting the same teachers that left us. And so it needed to be a space, right, where I can say, okay, don't worry, we're going to find the answer to that. And then it became these problem solving sessions. So people didn't want to miss it because someone would bring up a question and it's like, oh, I have an, you know, I have an answer for that. So um, all of us, what we are so good about is very like-minded and uh, challenging the status quo when it comes to someone who doesn't want to do good for kids. Or if we have a person in our organization that is just wanting to go back to what learning used to be or the teachers unions want to be very teacher centered and not student centered, right? And so we were all dealing with that. And 
Um, we have people in our organizations that are wonderful and they're going to do always the good work, but there's always going to be those other ones that are definitely going to be the union leaders that are going to push back and not want to do th certain things. And so with that, we all have, um, you know, just that drive within us and the courage to say no when we see it no. And in a way that, you know, help me understand why you don't want to teach all kids. Like, help me understand why you think that it's okay for an English learner not to be on an accelerated track because, you know, it's just Spanish. Like they haven't learned English yet, but their brain is like super powerful wanted to say that um, it's really doing life together. And when Veronica was talking about uh, people asking, are you the one behind the remind? I think sometimes our titles um, can get in the way of people being vulnerable and believing we're in this together. I'm struggling just like my staff is struggling, which is why I value so much this group. What does school represent to all of us? Because I think everyone that I'm looking at the screen right now, we all do a really good job of making sure that we, we, you know, we fight for all students. So let's just pretend that you are now nominated to build the ultimate international school. Think drive and sign in front of your school. What does it say? I would say my billboard would say learning with love, grace, and equity. I think mine would say genius lives here. I think mine would say um, equity and excellence. All means all, the colon, where dreams come true. All are welcome. Mine would see, be, uh, be present, opportunities for all. Mine would be, I am loved here. I want you to think of a piece of tech personally, not something you bought for your, well, I could say, but I don't think there's anything that costs a hundred dollars for your whole district, but if it is, please let me know. <laughs> but the question is once again, what is a piece of tech? It could be a gadget, it could be a software, it could be whatever that has brought you personal joy over the past year, that's a hundred dollars or less. The Bluetooth speaker that just pops out all the music. I think with all the zooming we do, uh, a ring light. Okay, so I, I don't know if it's a hundred dollars or less because it's um it's we video. So I've been really playing with we video and making my read alouds and putting all these cool. I've been learning a lot. So this and I didn't have Spotify before, and so this and Spotify together. The podcast app that comes on my phone uh, from Apple but I use Stitcher when I'm looking for a topic. So let's just say if we're looking for, um, you know, uh, uh, whatever topic comes to your mind, I go in there, I search for the topic, and then I see a bunch of people who are in different podcasts who are talking about that subject. So I get different perspectives about what that particular thing is. You know what, you know, it's funny, Martina, it's like, it's like anything, right? Like, um, well, maybe because I spent a lot of time with positions, like, like when Lucio was a principal, I could understand that always on approach. I mean, that you're always on, you know, any, if something could happen, the school won't open, there's, you know, some tragedy at school. I mean, you're always on, you know, yeah. and there's some positions like that, that you're always on. And I remember in the CTO class, someone said, Hey, you know what? Um, if you don't like being always on, then go find a different job, you know? And, and that's the bottom line, dude, is that now in this role, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're, you're always on, you know, it, 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 even pre COVID if services weren't running, um, right. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd have to know you'd have to, you're always on, you know, I enjoy it, but then, but then, um, but then some people, you know, it, it does get tiring and then you have to learn how to manage it too. So respect, man. Cause you, you, you had a double, we had at least had some experience in our roles and then we could yeah. use that experience and figure it out. But man, you know, it's like you got all of this all at once and then COVID. So respect, man, that, you know, yeah. I'm glad you're hanging in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, called, it's called survival, gentlemen. That's what it's yeah. called. <laughs> yeah. Of, you know, and I told people around me, I'm like every skill from the very beginning, everything that I've ever learned in education, I've used it all in this position. It's true. It's true. Everything, everything, yeah. whether, you know, it's whether it's communication, yeah. Um, both sides of the tech world, right? The ed tech side, the IT side, and it's like, oh, now, 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 now it's getting real, right? Yeah. And you know, I have a small team también. So mm -hmm. you know, when I tell people, it's like, you know, when when, we, when you look at our district, right? Normally, you support, you know, your 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 classified and certificated folks. 
and your students, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, if they're taking it, we weren't one-on-one -on -one yet before COVID hit. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, guess what? You now have to provide this as well. And then the training, right? Not only are you training, you know, teachers who weren't there yet comfortable with, with the blending, but you're now also training, you know, principals, you're training um, um, uh, uh, parent educators, you're training okay. students, you're training parents, right? So you went from, you know, supporting a certain amount and the balloon about, you know, two thirds over. And you're all doing it with the same team, probably less budget, right? So I'm going I'm going I'm, I'm going to mix this so I'll make sure that... <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize we were recording earlier so if you can delete all those derogatory Oh no that's, of mine. <laughs> that's that so you know I, I I hacked into your Facebook account and I'm streaming it uh, live <laughs> I, I love I love everyone I love everyone oh. You don't know. No, are you gonna it, are, are you gonna take back all the jokes you made about me Tony? <laughs> no. And that's, you could that's, actually That's going to be the highlight reel. Create that in a highlight reel. That would be amazing. No, no, no. Yeah, it, it's it's really is probably a little bit more have a little bit more on 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 what we were already doing. I think certainly when 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 the pandemic first hit, you know, we wish we would have had a a one week or a two week or a three week notice or something. You know, but yeah, because all of a sudden it was like, all right, that's it. You know, you guys are going home today and, and you're not coming back. And so, so certainly that's just the way the way things happen i think looking back and more than anything is is things are the way they are it was it was unforeseen it was, it was, we are in, a, in the situation where we are because it, because it happened exactly how it did i can think about what were some of the things that were working before and what were some of the things that that we need more of so certainly i think uh, we were able to leverage a lot of the planning, a lot of already setting the vision ahead of time, because a lot of the things that are that are, that are helping us now is just an acceleration of what was already planned. But it, I think it was that think, stop, reflect, and then move forward upon that reflection from what you've learned and, and push on forward. I, I mean, well, Lucia, and congratulations to both mm -hmm. of you, you know, but to what you guys are doing. I mean, it's, it's gnarly. I, I think as, you know, with that question in mind, I naturally went to kind of the same things that Lucia was talking about, but I'm going to present it maybe in like a, a three bullet point approach. One of the things that I, I was super, I'd be, I was super thankful for the, uh, for the initiatives that we had already started. Mm -hmm. I think part of a technology leader's position, no matter if you're a, you know, a small team, large team, is that you have to be strategic, yeah, which is why some, sometimes you have like innovation in your title or it's part of the things that you do. It's why we attend conferences. It's why we look out for things because we're trying to figure out what the next thing is going to be. So while we could, none of us could predict COVID clearly, but we do understand the importance of being connected. We do understand the importance of having devices, of having training, of having culture, because those things are lasting, right? So it was important, you, you, you know, to have, I would say I was really thankful that we had those pieces in play. El Centro is a K-8 district. We have 5,300 kids. You know, we're, uh, we're 15 miles away from uh, Lucio's district. Uh, but our needs are different, right? Um, I, I would tell myself in February, so I'd be, I'd, I would tell myself, you know, you're thank, you're, luckily you're in this position, right? Luckily you're in this position. Second is that um, I would tell myself that COVID is going to change everyone, you know, um, one way or another. And, and it tested my leadership, you know, from handling the stress of people, the, the stress that other people were feeling. Um, I would consider myself uh, a very empathetic leader um, but at the same time, uh, you know, the most sympathetic leaders get really tested uh, when you're trying to, you know, move quickly and minimize errors and everyone else's stress levels through the roof. Right. Um, so I would tell myself, hey, it's going to change everyone um, and you're going to have to manage those changes. It could be their personality. It could be, um, you know, um, their concentration levels, you know, a list of, uh, of stuff, a litany of stuff that could be. So I would I would definitely tell that person, you know, back in February, like, hey take a step back. Awesome. You know, it's funny because I used to tell people that that technology was was changing the world, right? That technology was moving so fast that, you know, the world was changing. It's emphasizing that so much. Technology is changing the world. We got to be ready for it. Literally, we all knew that COVID was going to hit and just tell technology to move to the side, right? And just moved everything <laughs> <laughs> at a thousand times faster. It was just unbelievable. But also, I think the greatest lesson, I think also real, real grateful is, is that, uh, and I think Antonio and I can both speak to the same thing to our situation is it's just, you know, it, it, you have to be part of a team. 
right? You have a situation yeah. like this and, 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 and we've all benefited from having tremendous amount of teams within our own tech department, uh, with, within our district office, within our principals, within our teachers, just, I mean, again, it goes back to having leveraged all those relationships and that teamwork beforehand. And, and it just became a matter of now it became even uh, at a much tighter knit community of, of, of collaboration and working together. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Roxanne Fuentes. I'm the proud superintendent of Berryessa Union School District. If we had a time machine and we were able to place you in this time machine and we can take you back to February, what would you tell the February 2020 Roxanne? Uh, I'd be telling my myself back in February to remember to take your vitamins. You're going to need them and to get used to living in flux, like get used to, um, you know, shifting guidances, get used to, you know, changing protocols, uh, get used to, you know, uh, weekly updates uh, from the state and the county and, and your your local folks um, shifting you into a new direction, you know, get get comfortable with, you know, um, get comfortable with change, you know, get comfortable with change, um, you know, be flexible, be adaptable. That would be key, key reminders. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, and I think this is, um, you know, definitely I say it more to myself via COVID, uh, but it's something I've always told myself when I find, um, you know, myself facing a, a big challenge, a, a big problem that I need to, you know, really take time with is just breathe you know, just breathe. And you see that on different stationary cards and different things like that. But at, that's not where I got it from. Uh, I got it from my father back when I was working on my doctorate, actually. And I was juggling, uh, working on my dissertation, being a brand new assistant superintendent, and just lots of change. And, you know, I was going crazy. And, you know, my, my dad uh, was a, a great dad, always trying to take care of me and, you know, would be like, you know, Miha, sit down, you need to eat dinner. And I'd be like, I don't have time for dinner. I've, I've got to do this. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, you've got to eat, you know, you've got to eat, or you're not going to be able to do any of those things that you need to do. And, you know, and he would always just tell me, you have to just breathe, like, just breathe. You're smart you're going to figure it out. You know, you have to take care of yourself though, to be able to, you know, figure out what those solutions are and to be able to, to think through them, you know, with all that capacity, you know, that you need. And so I find myself, you know, my father passed away eight years ago. And so I find myself that when things are hard, that's the saying that comes into my mind, like just breathe. Mm -hmm there's a solution like you know you just need to take that time to sit down reflect and work through those components and you'll get there like one step at a time right so that's kind of I think what I what I go by when I think about mottos um I get that inspiration little energy boost from my father's voice <laughs> saying you know you can do this just breathe and move forward <laughs> yes 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 Hi, my name is Susan Shattuck and I teach at Piedmont Middle School and I teach band and orchestra. I'm Evelyn Montoya. I teach choir, music appreciation and violin at Sierra Mont Middle School. Hi, I'm Jessica Nguyen. I teach choir and music appreciation at Morrill Middle School. My name is Celeste Wilson. I teach at Piedmont Middle School. I teach choir and music appreciation. What was your largest struggle into teaching in person to going online? Um, I think the biggest struggle for myself is um, to is content, um, kind of creating everything. Um, we are creating everything. Um, music doesn't lend itself uh, easily to online learning. And so even though I was already doing Google Classroom um, when we were in school and stuff like that, 
Uh, and I'm very grateful because I made the transition um, there a lot easier, but digital music, you know, the kids um, haven't done that or even like um, sound engineering or anything that um, does lend itself musically. Um, it's it's con curriculum and content creating it. I would agree with Celeste. That was um, a difficult transition because the kids are used to seeing you every single day and you have all ma your materials with you in front of you during class time. So it was a matter of, wait, now we have to try and figure out how are we going to do class online? I don't have all my materials online. How can I engage the students? How can I keep their interest up and still enjoy music in the same process? Um, so when we got that uh, announcement, well, first it started with the week before, I would say, I think March 5th, I think mm -hmm. March 5th was um, the night of my uh, spring festival concert. And that's when we were supposed to do all our uh, festival type music. Uh, festival means like competition type music. Okay. Uh, that was supposed to be uh, all of the things that we're, we were going to perform at Disneyland and Great mm -hmm. America. That's right. And they said, okay, that's that right. concert's now canceled. Like 90 minutes before curtain, they said, you're not going to do the concert. Everything's canceled. I was already ready head out the door and they said, don't come to school. And I said, what? Um, and then, so we got, we got our concerts taken away. We got our competitions taken away and our district is so well known for constantly getting gold at all of these things. Um, so from being uh, that type of musician, having our students being that type of musician to being a studio musician, a studio, um, uh, like a recording artist. It's so different. Um, we weren't prepared to teach them how to record all of those things because we didn't really have much experience doing that ourselves on top of family stuff and like, you know, right. personal health stuff. Like, I don't know if I want to go into all of that. It was, it was a lot. Normally I can see the entire person and I can fix like their posture or their. So, uh, so it's, I see, once again, I learn something every day. So it's the, uh, the way a person stands or positions their body for better performance. Yeah, definitely. So wow. it's the way they sit up tall, it's the way they stand. Okay. Um, that all is built from the ground up so I can help fix and improve their singing right and then there are things i couldn't fix about their singing or their music making just because i couldn't see them choir teacher when did that happen to you or was it oh, they don't like this nope not gonna teach that great and <laughs> definitely not gonna do that so i'm gonna go over here um music connects music is so much about connection um, if you think of it as, uh, like something you're trying to sell to the parents, like, you know, like it connects so many parts of a, a, a person's brain. Um, so you can argue, yes, you're going to have a higher GPA, which you will, by the way. Um, but not only that, you're, you're also connecting things to, um, maybe it's historical context. You could be connecting, uh, virtually, uh, collaborating online with someone. Um, just, just focusing on that, that connection. And this job is the hardest it has ever been. And like, you know, like we all said, it's like we're first year teachers again. We're learning everything so fast, but it's because we love this craft. And um, it might suck a couple days, but you know, you could just be like, oh, I just figured out how to do this. And I got to share it with my students right now. And so you just you know, you, you attach everything and then you send it to them. And you're like, look at that, this, this, this new thing that I'm going to show you right now. Oh my gosh, listen to this. And they're like, wow. So, <laughs> you know, um, that, that makes it worth it, even though it's, it got 10,000 times harder. Um, I think uh, my why um, has to go kind of piggybacking on what Emily said is the connection uh, that I am so grateful that I get to be these kids teachers for sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and I get to know their families. Uh, sometimes it's the siblings of, you know, kids. So I've known certain families for a really, really long time and building that kind of connection. Um, sometimes I, my, 
I always tease my friends. I say that I teach group work. That's what it is. It's like a huge class in group work. And you have to be part of this group. You have to be part of the team. You have to be a good team player. You have to um, contribute and learning how to be a good person. Um, so you're not, you know, hogging up different things, you know, and stuff like that. So all of those, teaching all of those things through music is, is why I do it because I get to see the other end and I get to see my students. I'm grateful to have the connection with them. Um, my name is Tova Smith and I am a middle school art teacher in the Berryessa School District at Morrill Middle School. Thinking about art and you're thinking because we're, you know, we're now at the age that we are teaching distance, what are some of your go-to tools, you know, technology tools that you use or programs, you know, because I, I know like there's always like a thousand and one that pops up, um, you know, there's always all these different labs, but what, what's, your, what's your go-to or, or what do you enjoy, I should say, using in your class? In terms of like digital art or mm -hmm digital tools to well well both you know i you know because i digital tools so your students can be able to create and then what are some other you know resources that that you think you know um people out there might 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 want to use i so one thing i've been trying to do with art classes i try to approach it again two ways if students have the resources like a tablet and a stylus to uh, use to make digital art, and this is right now. Um, I allow them to do, we're in a drawing unit, so I allow them to use the tablet and the stylus for whatever they want. And I have several apps that I suggest for them to use that. But then um, I, I try to encourage students to use some of their art time to spend time away from the screen, <laughs> um, which I know is not exactly what you're asking, but we're so, kids are so, and adults are so screened up right now that wow. some of my students, I just encourage them to use a physical sketchbook and just give themselves an hour and take time away. That being said, um, one thing that I haven't yet used, but hope to is the Google Arts and Culture platform to tour museums. And then um, I've been using Padlet a lot, a lot. To, really? Yeah. Okay. So it's an easy way. Um, my students and I create during class at the same time together because one thing I've found is that because of the stress of distance learning, they often feel like they are pressured to do their academic work at other times. And so when I hold the um, 55 minutes of their art class as time dedicated towards art, the feedback I've gotten from them is that they really appreciate it, so. My name is Veronica Goldinas. I'm a principal at Pomona Unified School District. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Profe Ms. V. Goldinas. This was really, really interesting to me because I, I have to tell you though, I heard, I don't know if it was a podcast, I don't know if it was, I read something in a blog, I don't know. But they're saying that there wasn't too much science behind that. So I'm like, I'm brand new to this, you know. But what I do know is that music puts me in a different mood, certain musics, right? Um, first, tell us what it is and then tell us how you, how you got into it. So learning w w through my classes through uh, with Desiree and attending different workshops for the essential oils, that was brought in. Um, and shared with us. And then actually I have an elementary friend that we still keep in touch with. And I had posted something on Instagram because she had said she, she's a musician and, and she had mentioned something about these Hertz healing, healing um, music. And I was like, what is this about Jen? Like, can you share? And she sent me this whole list of different um, measurements of music that help heal for different things. And one of the ones that she mentioned was 396 hertz um, removes the guilt and the negative thought and turns your your brain waves to think in a joyous format. Sounds like, oh, whatever, she's crazy, right? Just like people think of me and my oils, right? So then I just started Googling myself, you know? I went back and like dug back deeper. It's back into the Greek times. 
um, when they were studying how music and certain tones in music does something in the brain and it kind of does something in the body too. And then actually there's something about when I go to church and I sit and the choir is singing through these monk songs that just kind of puts you in this meditative state that you're just like, why does it just feel amazing? And then the frankincense incense is going and you're just like in this awesome orb of being, you know, in calm in, in, in church, right? So the monks sing in six different tones. And when they hit those notes on key, it goes straight to your brain and then it, it relaxes you and it changes your mood instantly, which is fascinating, right? Okay. So as a principal, I would have kids, they still, I mean, right now they don't, but before COVID, they would come into the office and they would be like fuming or getting ready to get into a fight or like anxiety of the gazoo, right? So then I would just have them sit in my office. I have Legos in my office. I have um, kinetic sand. And then I would uh, put two to three drops of lemongrass in the kinetic sand. So when they would play with the kinetic sand, it would release the lemongrass and lemongrass what it does it reduces that anxiety and that negative talk that they're they're feeling right then in the background on my computer i would look up okay kid is feeling anxious what hurts music do i play in the background right, right. and then i would play something that to reduce anxiety or release fear or whatever it is and then so the music would be going some of the kids would notice it's like what is that miss godinas oh nothing don't worry about it. It's just, you know, music playing in the background. You know how that is. And they would just like continue their playing with the Lego, sitting, reading a book, whatever. After they were calm and ready and collective, mm -hmm. some of them were ready to go back outside and play. Others just needed to talk. And that's just combination of using the essential oils, using the music to calm them down and helping them find that space where they're feeling comfortable, which that's is kind amazing, of amazing, amazing. So you gotta share your 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 I'm gonna call it your monk playlist. <laughs> I'll share that. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually I, on YouTube. I haven't Spotify is is okay, but it um, doesn't have all the good ones. Cause there's even one YouTube playlist that lasts eight hours. Like you can play it for eight hours in a speaker in your room yeah. and just let it in the background play and you'll sleep like a baby share share that with me and i'll share it with 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 all of our folks. i've used it with my husband when he's like because he's a drunk driver so he's like stressed <laughs> all the time so it's like okay he's not in a good mood i'll diffuse my grumpy oil husband oil which is siberian fur and lemongrass yeah and then i'll play the music and he's a happy camper in just wow. a couple hours How's it going? My name is Jonathan Tividad. Uh, I think I'm the best rapping principal alive, but I happen to work in Allen Rock Union School District as a TK through eighth grade principal. Um, you can find me online at Mr. Underscore and Tividad Underscore on Twitter, uh, on Instagram at Native J. So, so tell me, how, how did you get how did you get into um, just just flowing? Is it something that you just picked up along the way, or was it just natural? back in a house party, 1997? Uh, it was a uh, Tried by 12. <laughs> it was it was on and the doo, doo, yeah. doo, and it was like it was like we we're all sitting around and wow. some of my friends, some are drinking, some are some whatever, and just like we're just sitting there. And then I just picked it up. And then from there, it's just you know, kicking rhymes. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend at the time had a cotillion. I wanted to, you know, show out. So I, I kicked the I kicked the flow during her, during the presentation of the, you know, the thing for her birthday. Right, right. And then going to Riverside from San Jose. That's a long time. So back then you got the tape because I had, I used to have, you know, the 90 minute tapes, but one side would be like Smith right. and Wesson recognized one yeah. side would be like, you know, um, AZ Sugar Hill. Mm -hmm. And I just have the same beat going over and I just be kicking rhymes by myself driving. And then one day my radio broke. So I had no thing. So like, I would just kick rhymes by myself and just like this, like, you know, yo, I see your car, man, I'm going to UCR six hours by far dropping bars <laughs> along the highway five, kicking direct in live, man, what's up with this? What's up with this job? I can't go anymore. Cause I'm aboard and floored by the situation. Got me facing all these fools. Is and I just did it. Wow. And then, so when I finally got back into teaching, 
Mm-hmm. My first exhibition night, um, I took Justin Bieber's baby. Yeah. yeah. I made a Save Me song with endangered animals. The next year I did the Teach Me How to Dougie to teach me how to study and did a whole thing with that. <laughs> and then like every year I would add on. I, I used Kanye's Gold Digger for fourth grade, ready to make a gold digger. Yeah, yeah. I used this the songs. And then one night at a bar with my homies, I was we were drinking some back and I said, you know what, man? Nas, Jay-Z, and they're all good, but I swear to God, bro, I'm, I'm the best rapper alive. <laughs> and my homies who I've known since like preschool, they they look, they so they're like. <laughs> and it started laughing so hard and and it's and i was i was like what bro no i, I seriously am and then so i got the nickname the bra for a while the best rapper alive and then when i got into teaching i i, I self-proclaimed best rapping teacher alive yeah. and then changed the job best rapper friends alive and this is like the confidence where like on any given day i don't mm-hmm. care if it's rapping if it's sports or singing right, right. but if you give a, a cat some confidence like that um, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna see some fun things. Yeah. So like when I see kids like doing like I get it, drill and kill math facts. It sucks. But we're gonna listen to some rocky beats on it, right? Or we're gonna put some BPM, some trance on it. Mm, 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 yeah, three times three is nine. Yeah, <laughs> you know? And so that's just me being that hype man. Yeah. And then I just happen to, you know, work in education. But um awesome. I yeah. yeah. I when I first met you, you had spoken about it or someone told me, but it wasn't until that one night, I can't remember, it was like two or three cues ago. And um, I remember this. Yeah, we were talking about uh, at the bar, at the bar yeah, with the- uh, Yeah, and yeah. I was just like, I was like so impressed because like, you know, when you're younger, everybody tries it, right? But when you can do it yeah. off the top of your dome, and, you know, I, I know some people who can, but it's like, you know, they've always told me it was like, well, I've always loved words. And for me, it's like, you know, they would listen to jingles, like when they were kids in cartoons, and then, you know, they would create their own. Did you ever do that? Or, you know, was it? Kind of. So my mom, like, so way back in high school, I had this project too, we did for Solstice, I remember, and we made this Mr. Bandman thing. And remember, I love In Living Color. And, you know, as, as, no, but in Living Color is my thing. So when you right. hear mashups, right? Take Vanilla Ice, like White White Baby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Tommy Davidson doing his MC Hammer thing, right? Surprise. So you know the, the, how a mashup works. Mm-hmm. And then so that, that's all it is. And so like, um, like I said, I used to, when I was a kid, I used to remember the whole Han Solo uh, Greedo thing. You know, through that through Han Solo. Ah, cha, 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 you know, so I would memorize things like that. Oh, but it wasn't yeah. until like, again, when I, and I, back my old car was an old 63 Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, yeah. With a Krako radio made out of Compton. It would eat tapes unless it was like one weird thing. Only if it was one song all the way through. And there was no rewind. You had to eject it and put it in to, to fast forward to rewind the thing. Wow. And so I became the repetitive pattern. It's the same beat going on, on and on. Yeah, yeah. So when you have that, what do you do? You just either listen to the same song, but my stuff would speed up music. So I just made instrumentals and then just kick rhymes on beats. That is awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right. All right, brother. So here's what we're going to do. I have, um, just so you know, Mm -hmm. I have a few tracks. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Love it. So I have a few tracks I have created for you. And okay. I'm I'm gonna throw you a theme while we're gonna work. I'm gonna throw you a theme, and we just flow. If you you know you, you tell me how you want to run this, right? You can say, well, I think give me you know give me a minute, give me thirty seconds, <laughs> give me an hour and a pen and a pad. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna give you a topic. So the first one is just education right now, just so you can warm up. I don't know how you flow, but I'm just going to get, you know. Try it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Here we go. So the first one is education. Three, two. Get busy, yo. Yo. Education is so different. It's kind of filled with all this stress, all these assessments, man. It's like, give it a rest. You don't need to test. We need to communicate, build relationships with kids. All these things, man, it's in the past, which it did. Keep it new and keep it real. Keep it consistent. All these people know how to lead. I think they've done missed it. And by it, I mean the point. What you're going to do? Represent to the fullest with the Q-Tang crew. What does that mean from you to me on the mic? Too much zooming and that's out of sight. Yo, I want to take flight with my skills. Keep it real with the peeps that I 
truly feel. The SEL tip is another type of thing, but we ain't doing enough of that. Ding, ding, here's a bell. As far as I can tell, your mic is closed, and so is your video. This is what happens when you want to connect like Legos. Forget your ego, drop on the spot, but this is what happens when I'm on the block without my talk in the tick. Another type of social media tip. This is what happens if we don't connect it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Make it all that, because I'm out the heezy. <laughs> yeah. I'm, this, man. I'm getting nervous on this, man. I'm like, I got more. <laughs> it's all you good, give me like three topics. Give me like three topics. I'll try to connect them no, if you want. We're gonna, we're gonna try different stuff. We're gonna try different stuff. Yeah, yeah. If, if just just if if you like one, right? If you like one, you're like, okay, let's return to that. How did you like that 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 little beat, that little mix, still? Hey, you know me. I don't I don't care. I'll rap. I'll rap on anything, man. Okay. With, with that, the way you go. All right. So we're we're, we're gonna try another one. Uh. This is my metal drums one. Let me cue this up. And let's talk about COVID. Ooh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> let's talk about COVID. All right, here we go. Three, two, and. Yeah, here we go. COVID-19. It's kind of meaner. I wish he had better leadership from my leader, number 45. From the top, he got got. But this is what happens when you don't pull the shots. Wear a mask, keep that six feet. But man, some people, they think it out of the beat head. They're thinking like it's a conspiracy. But all these people, man, they're getting kind of crazy. Lazy, Patrick Swayze, dancing dirty. I don't know what's up with that mask. It don't hurt me. It don't hurt you as much. It's not no CO2. It's all about keeping that flu away. Forget it, yo, this man from San Jose up in the west to the east, lyrically inclined, man, you got to have that feast. And by that, I mean the eats of the east. Man, I don't know, but you got to defeat. Forget the disease. Put on a mask. You can't do that, man. It's a simple task. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Being a principal. Being a principal. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Whenever, man. All right, let's do this. This is Pachunga Scratch 3. <laughs> Here we go. Let me cue it up. Three, two, and... Being a principal is really quite hard. These people, they want to pull your dang card. You got to try listening and stop talking so much and understand what's really going on. It's the inside stuff, not the NBA. It's the SEL. But so many people front so many times, man, it's hard to tell. What's the true problem? You got to dig deep. Are you bending over and starting to reach? It doesn't matter if it's a little kid or a big adult, a parent or a mom, but it ain't their fault. If you choose to make it happen through the rapping and rhymes, but you definitely got to make sure and take that time. Make sure that you straight babbling and listening. All these other people, man, they straight, stay dissing. Valley the firm, but build and bridge. And if it's do that, man, it doesn't matter if it's an adult or kid. That's how it happens. That's how I keep it real. Because on the microphone in the class, I always keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> That's that right. Rocky Holly. That's that Shiraki Holly stuff, man. Valley the firm, build the bridge. It's my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. 